Good afternoon and welcome to today's episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Our organist is Andrew Unsworth and I'm your host, Luke Howard. Josef Reinberger spent most of his career as an organist and composer in Bavaria, in the south of Germany, but he was actually from Liechtenstein, perhaps the only Liechtensteiner composer to enjoy a successful international career. And there's no question Reinberger was successful. He was prolific as a composer, appointed court conductor in Munich, and a professor of piano, organ, and composition at the Munich Conservatorium, where his students included Richard Strauss and Wilhelm Furtwängler. And his organ works continue to hold a significant place in the performing repertoire. We'll hear the scherzoso from Reinberger's Sonata No. 8. The spiritual Great Day has been included in African-American hymnals for just over a century. It was first published in 1916, although, of course, it was likely sung and passed along through oral tradition for many decades before then. It's a real testament to the power of faith, optimism, and resilience in the face of such dire circumstances that the words of so many African-American spirituals remain so upbeat. In the four verses with refrain of Great Day, there are no fewer than 14 exclamation points in the lyrics. Great day, great day, God's going to build up Zion's walls. The words speak of chariots in the mountains, breastplates, swords and shields. And these images abound in the Bible, most frequently in contexts of a battle between good and evil in which divine aid will lead to victory. The lyrics also address our own contributions to this cosmic conflict. Valiant-hearted men, no cowards in our band, the righteous marching boldly in the field. We understand that we are participants, not just onlookers. But there's one metaphor in this powerful spiritual that's repeated over and over again that doesn't come directly from the Bible. Every second line in the stanzas repeats, God's going to build up Zion's walls. 
it's the response in the call and response form of the stanza. But what are Zion's walls? In Christian thought, Zion has a number of related but distinct meanings. It can mean the land of Israel, Jerusalem itself, the kingdom of heaven, the church. But among scattered Jews longing for their homeland, it could also mean a place of refuge that they had not yet attained. And that's how the exclamation, God's going to build up Zion's walls, seems to make a lot of sense. Those walls will be a refuge for the righteous, where, as the second verse of the great day proclaims, the Lord has set his people free. It will be a community protected from the onslaught of evil. That powerful thought and promise can keep all of us optimistic amid challenges and dark days. Andrew plays now his own arrangement of the spiritual great day. Sir Charles Hubert Hastings Parry wrote two organ works titled Elegy, one in 1913 and another in 1918. Or, more accurately, the first is titled Elegy and was written for the funeral of Parry's brother-in-law. The second is titled Elegy, 1918, with the German IE spelling at the end. We don't know who exactly this work was intended to memorialize, but Parry composed it in March 1918. He had been serving as director of the Royal College of Music at the time, so he might have been thinking of his former pupils and associates who had died in the war. Or, perhaps, with the German spelling of the title, it could be a lament for everyone who was killed in that brutal, tragic conflict. After Parry's elegy, Andrew will play his own arrangement of Come, Come Ye Saints, the traditional hymn arrangement in these concerts from Temple Square.
Prospect of Heaven is an American hymn first published in 1835 by William Walker in the volume titled Southern Harmony, a crucially important collection of early 19th century folk hymn tunes. But, somewhat unusually, we actually know who composed this particular tune. It was the Reverend William Grambling, a friend and colleague of Walker's. It always helps getting your own music published when you know the publisher, right? Andrew plays his own arrangement of Prospect of Heaven next, and then he concludes his program with The Prelude and Fugue in G Minor by Johannes Brahms, published after Brahms's death as his Without Opus 10. And this is a youthful work that Brahms wrote when he was thinking he might like to become an organ virtuoso. That proved more difficult than he imagined. It's nice to know sometimes that these giants of the classical music canon were actually human and occasionally came up against the limits of their musical abilities. He never did become an organ virtuoso, but this interest did spark a lifelong fascination with the music of Bach. First, Andrew's arrangement of Prospect of Heaven, and then Brahms to close.
Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up with organist Andrew Unsworth. We're so glad you joined us. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash pipingup. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square, streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.